For the month of December, I went with a snowy mountains theme to go with the Christmas festivities of the month. I'm absolutely in love with the outcome. And now I'm going to show you guys how I created this month's planner with Canva.com. At the top right, click on Create a Design. Then click on Custom Size. For an A5 size design, I'm using the measurements 14.8 by 21 centimeters. I went to Elements on the left and typed Forest in the search bar. Then I clicked on Graphics. This first page is where I'm going to collect all the graphics and images that I might want to use throughout the planner. Keep in mind that I'm using the Pro version of Canva, so I do have more options, although the free version still has a lot of options as well. Also, if you are using the free version and you really want to use an element that is not free, you can just buy that one element. As you can see, I'm going for a grey-blue colour scheme. I liked the idea of maybe adding reindeer to the theme, so I went to the search bar and typed reindeer. Now that I think I have all the decoration elements I might need, I added a new page and started creating the cover page. To copy an element, you can click on it, then go to the top right corner and click on the block with the little plus sign on it. Or you can just copy and paste it the old fashioned way. For the cover page, I wanted to create a distant forest scene with mountains in the background and reindeer in the front. To create the forest, I took this clump of trees and copied them multiple times. I flipped some of them horizontally to create some variation. Next, I added a few reindeer. around with different mountain graphics until I found the one that I liked the most. I wanted to have a cloudy sky. I didn't really know how I would do this because the mountains are transparent, so I needed to find something that would work with the mountains.
found this misty cloud that I thought could work as the background for the mountains, but in the end it wasn't really the look that I was going for. I also didn't like the colour of the sky, so I undid everything. I still liked the misty cloud effect, so I decided to use it in front of the forest. Then I continued my search for clouds. I found this realistic looking sky graphic. I cropped out the landscape and dragged it to size. I copied and flipped it to create more variation. I also played around with different colors. I really liked how this was starting to look. I added more copies playing around with cropping, sizing and rotating to fill up the sky. Next, I wanted to add some snow over everything, so I searched for it under graphics and found this one with really fine snowflakes. I really like the look of this cover page. Now it's time to add the name of the month. I went to text on the left and scrolled down to see if there's a font that I liked. This font didn't exactly match what I wanted, so I searched more fonts until I found the right one. Now it's time to create the monthly calendar. I went to elements again and searched for grid. Then I clicked on graphics. I chose this 5x5 five five grid. I want the calendar to stretch over two pages, so I cropped the grid to 4x5 blocks. I copied the page and cropped the grid to 3x5 blocks on that page. To check if the grids are aligned, 
I click on the little square at the bottom left to get an overview of all the pages. Next, I added some decorations. I used the same snow effect that I used on the cover page. I didn't want the snow to be visible behind the calendar, so I added a white block behind the grid. I did the same for the next page. On the right I created a monthly goals section by using a block that I found under elements and then lines and shapes. I also added a border around the block. I actually forgot to leave space for the days of the week, so I had to move things around and resize them a bit. I went to text on the left and clicked on add a subheading. Then I searched for a font that I liked. I started diversifying my income streams and I want to keep track of it all throughout the month. I wanted to create an income and expenses tracker. I clicked on elements and searched for lines. Then I clicked on photos and I inserted this picture.
I went to Elements again and selected the line under Lines and Shapes. You can edit the thickness of the line at the top. What better month to create a wish list than the month of December? I had a few things that I wanted to save up for, so I wanted to make a list. Now it's time for my weekly planning setup. For the first page, I'm going to create a task list, a priority section, and a notes section.
On the next page is where I'll have my daily tasks of the week. I'm also going to be adding a little weekly goal section. For the goal section, I wanted the border to stop at the edges of the word, so I inserted a little box that's behind the word but in front of the border. Then I made it white to blend in with the page. Then I just copied the two weekly planner pages for all the weeks of December and edited the dates. I actually forgot to add in the dates on the calendar, so I quickly did that.
I added a blank page between all of the pages for printing purposes. You'll see why I did this in a few moments. Print the first page, I selected page 1. Then I selected two pages per sheet and I set the scale to fit to paper. To print the next page on the back of page 1, I put the page in the printer again but I put it in the wrong side up. I shouldn't have flipped the page over. I'll show you how it came out in a few seconds. For the second page, you're going to select page 2 and 3. So here's where the white pages come into play. Select two pages per sheet and make sure the scale is still set on fit to paper. Now the print is on the right side of the page. So because I put the page in wrong side up, it printed the second page on the same side as page 1. Oops. This is what it should look like. Let's try again with the next few pages. Next, we're going to print the third print which is page 5. Once printed out, don't flip the page. Just put it back in exactly as it came out, so that the next print is on the back of this print. Now we print the next print with a blank page again, so that the print is on the right side of the page. I hope I'm explaining all this well enough. And then you just continue printing the pages like this, until you have all the pages printed back to back. So I'm going to use the cover page of my November planner as a guide to know where to cut the pages.
I used the same November cover page as a guide for where the holes should be punched. I don't have a six hole punch, which is why I have to mark the holes so that I can use this regular hole punch to make the holes. I took off the bottom cover so that I can see the pencil circles through the hole. Then I punched all the holes one by one. accidentally positioned the hole punch wrong, so it punched half a hole on the edge of the page. Oh well. I decided to put December's planning in front of November's. That way it's always in the front of my planner. But you don't have to do it like me. And that was December's digital plan with me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and that you liked December's design. If you did, please leave a like on this video. Also comment below if you're going to try this out yourself. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and then I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!